Today, we are going to be talking to someone that I think probably everybody in the profession may have certainly may not know, but like you should know because you've either are on his website or you're receiving an email from him, like it's in your inbox every day. So you're going to get the chance to actually meet the guy behind one of the predominant places we all get our news from in the profession. We'll maybe touch on like how in the world he got into this crazy profession of talking about accounting. <laughs> maybe we'll hit on some of the things we think are some of the big stories of the year so far. Um, and then also talk about what it's like throwing a big party for a bunch of accountants, i.e. a conference, <laughs> like having a first time conference. We're getting ready to do ours. We'll maybe do some takeaways on what the one to get our conference looks like. All of that here today on Drink While You Think, the weekly happy hour conversation between a couple of guys who are building their accounting firm in a really weird way. I'm your host, Kenji. My other host there is Matthew. Matthew, who's our sponsor today? Today's sponsor of Drink While You Think is Accounting Web Summit. Accounting Web Summit, the most impactful four days that you can spend in your life as an accountant in San Diego, California, Accounting Web Summit. If you missed the inaugural Accounting Web Summit, don't worry. It's back next year in May in sunny California, Accounting Web Summit. That's a great <laughs> promo, Matthew. The one thing I'll make a quick edit is it's also the Accounting Web Live Summit, but that's okay. I think people will find it, right? They'll oh, yeah. Find we'll find it, but hey. So let's I bet they reveal. have a hybrid version too. So yeah, let's yeah. reveal. People will probably figure this out now who our guest is. We got our man Seth Feinberg here. Folks, hey. I'll, know, I'll know Seth in the industry. Dude, we are happy, happy to have you here, especially because we found out you are a fellow craft beer nerd like we were. We've been almost wrapping about am. the beer stuff here for a bit. But before we get into all the fun with the beer, Dude, for the very random, strange person who may not know who you are, tell us who you are, what you're up to, and then most importantly, <laughs> what are you drinking today? All right. So uh, most importantly, how you doing? I'm Seth Feinberg. I am the editorial director, uh, uh, manager, uh, and U.S. team lead for Accounting Web. Accounting Web has, for over 20 years, been a resource specifically for for accounting professionals. So if you are in uh, North America and you share the title of accountant, bookkeeper, uh, CA, CPA, enrolled agent, you are our target audience because you are a professional accountant. You go to work every day to you know uh, make decisions at your firm or within your, your firm, that's your business. Or you know maybe you share it with somebody, and you are working with individuals and businesses to you know try to make their lives better. You did not choose this profession lightly, nor did I choose going into this career uh, lightly. I'm a business journalist now for over 30 years. I've spent up 20 of those covering accounting. Uh, I was with Accounting Today as the tech editor for a while. I tried to leave and do some different things. I got pulled back as the managing editor and now editorial manager um, for Accounting Web US. Ooh. And accounting has been, I don't know, I can't seem to leave it. It's its just, I've met some of the greatest people in my life, uh, just being a fly in the wall, really. And as far as what I'm drinking now, I will preface this by saying I was not always a beer drinker. Beer was not my first drink of choice. You know, living here in New York City, we really just, you know, you just didn't really see it. You know, you had to go to some bars that maybe had some foreign beers there from Germany, from Belgium, Amsterdam, the UK. Um, that's where, you know, maybe you would find good beer. But this whole idea of craft beer, micro brews, it, it, it really didn't hit. And I started hanging out with my buddies after work. At a couple of places, they're like, hey, I, it's got really good beer here. We're like, really? All right, fine. Let's give it a try. Whatever. A good happy hour or something. And, you know, lo and behold, you know, we would start seeing beers like Sierra Nevada, um, uh, uh, Red Hook ESB, um, Pete's Wicked Ale, um, and, you know, a bunch of, yeah, bunch, of, bunch, of, bunch of stuff from the mostly West Coast. You know, Portland, Washington, California, um, you know, Ballast, 
Uh, we would see the anchors, anchors, anchor steam. We would see those in San Francisco. And it was like, wow, there's actually like good beer here. Yeah. And then lo locally, all we had <clears throat> in the city was Brooklyn Brewery. And so we would actually go and hang out there in the late, late, late nineties, early two thousands, me and my buddies would go on a Friday night. They would open up the brewery to the public for a few hours. You go and get a little coin, you change your money in to get, you know, their beer. Yeah. That's all you could yeah. get there. And it was, it was great. It was like, we felt like we were a part of something and, you know, fast forward to now 20 odd years later, there are over 40 craft breweries right now active craft breweries here in new york city just in the five boroughs let alone where you guys are down in atlanta yep. it's blown the heck up and i remember years ago first trying uh like sweet water yeah 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 ter terrapin i was like ooh, like what's going on down here and now that's like old hat now yeah, it's like, yeah oh, everyone man. knows that now, now really it's real, like those are creature real comfort now. Oh, creature, yeah. <laughs> creature comforts, um, you know, anytime I'm down there, you just see creature comforts everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure there's, there's tons of others. I was just down in, uh, in Savannah and Tybee Island, um, you know, drinking some coastal waters, I think it's coastal waters. Yeah. You and yeah. I were messaging each other on Twitter. Like, DMing yeah, I was like, like we nice, yeah. nice mid, mid level, like just stuff. So here. Um, it's for, you know, the long way around saying, so I've started with a, a, a local meeting, you know, in New York state, this is from the Adirondacks, it's Paradox Brewery. They've got a Hellas. Nice. nice. So, you know, for the video, nice. on there, it's just the a nice, nice, uh, I will say, I love that. Love the, the Hellas. I was telling Matthew, I was brewing, I'm working on my home yep. brew right now. I've got a Hellas about a week or two out from being done. So you want, so you wanted to get sort of that nice kind of. Kind of hazy, you know, Heather, like golden color there. Mm. All right. Okay. Love it. All right, Matthew, what do you got today for us? All right. What are you drinking? Okay. So I, I knew Seth was coming on. So I knew I had to either up my game or go authentic. <laughs> so so I, I grew up on the border, man. So I went Mexican lager today. This is Ooh. a personal favorite, Dos Equis. It's my second favorite. Uh, if I didn't have any soul or I would have brought soul for you. And I... I am bringing it in a fancy glass like Kenji. A I do not. Get, I do not pour this for Kenji. So You're I'm doing do it not, for Seth. It, so I brought it for Seth because I was <laughs> like, I'm going to drink a beer out of a glass, which Kenji always gives me shit for. Just I do. I'm like, come on, man, so. put it in a glass. Put it in a glass there. Okay. So I, cheers. I, okay, hold on. Get cheers yet. I got to tell you what I'm having mine first. Go ahead and have a sip of it while I give you mine. Um, but I, I kind of like the setup that Seth did with this. Um, cheers, guys. I'll, I'll first show you show you my beer what I'm drinking. This is a funky one. This is a cool, I mean, this is a Wild Heaven. Um, and it's called the, you can't spell Haven without Evan. Um, Summer IPA. I don't know who Evan is there. And also the cool story about this is, this was in my beer fridge in the basement and I don't know how it got there. It's like when you find money, like in a pair of jeans, you're like cash, like, wait, what? Like I found... 20 bucks in my jeans. Like, where did this come from? I don't know where this beer came from. Probably my wife maybe put it in there for me, but I'm like, oh my gosh, usually beer disappears from my fridge. I have a 20 year old and some teenagers and things like that. So things disappear. Like this beer came out of nowhere. I'm excited about that. But um, while I'm pouring, I'll say that I remember same thing too, getting into craft beer, probably around the same time that you did, Seth, um, where really similar circumstances of like, you know, and for me, the beer that like used to blow my mind um, was my mom used to bring it to me and my brothers, um, was fat tire. So back in the day, fat tire from new Belgium out in Colorado, you couldn't get it many places, but because my parents live out in Colorado, she would drive it to me and bring it to me and my brothers. And we were so pumped. Cause like we, we'd sit here and drink as much Colorado beer as we could. We were out there visiting. And like I, this isn't Coors. This is not. And so you bring that back. So I, lo I always loved, um, uh, fat tire, whenever she'd bring us fat tire, she never brought us enough, but that's okay, mom. Uh, and then also the second one, one of our very first acuity clients back in the day mm. was kind of the original, I don't know if I call it a craft brew bar, but maybe right, Matthew, it's a terrible bar name for this, but taco Mac, they actually don't even serve tacos, but it was kind of a very widely known <laughs> bar in Atlanta. And they were the first ones you'd walk into and you have more than like three or four taps. You're like, 
What's oh, yeah, that they tap had the over wall there? Of taps. So they started having the wall of taps before. Was that in uh, Was that in Little Five? They have one. They have had some yeah. Little Five and Highlands, the original one out of so, Virginia. There's a couple of places yeah. I always sit when I'm there. Um, like yeah. just at that corner, that big popular corner. There's a couple of. There's a couple, couple of good pubs. spots, there, but back in the day, nobody See, had he's that. Smart, many beers. He smart. Goes yeah. and visits by my house. Well, that's where that's what happened. But like back in the day, Taco Mac was the only one. We actually made them our client. They were our client for years. We helped them through things. I think we tried to trade them. And out of the tech, I don't know if everyone can see if the video is getting recorded here, but Kenji actually has the tech for this. So points, points, points. I have one. I have one. I just chose the pint glasses. I I tend to I tend that for the you know if I'm doing like a good IPA, uh, like a good you know high single or even like a double a double. Definitely going in the tech yeah, gotta let that for me. But, yeah, I had some friends who got us this. This, is, this thing's awesome, and I like to flex, nice one. Fl- flex on Matthew because he's always usually drinking right out of the bottle. Like, dude, open it up. But anyway. what are you doing? So, all right, cheer. Now we can officially cheers. Okay, fellas. cheers, everybody. On. Cheers, cheers all. Everybody. Yep. All right, good deal. Cool. Well, um, oh man, that's gonna be solid. So, thirty years covering business reporting, but twenty uh, covering accounting, and you got sucked back in. Like, what? How, yeah. how, did the, how did the whole accounting thing start with you? Guys? So, uh, sure. Well, you know, again, as a business journalist, particularly in New York, uh, this, you have a lot of options. There's lots of yeah, choices. Yeah. You start down that path. I mean, I started writing about uh, metals and mining. I don't know. I was like a junior reporter yeah. on a daily daily newspaper that covered. They were just looking for, excuse me, some young talent, whatever. They gave me a shot. I was there for a few years. It was It was a total mill. You know, you would get in like it was like nine o'clock. Start, you know, the fact that we didn't have punch cards is amazing to me because <laughs> we had a whole desk of editors that were waiting for the reporters to like, you know, they were all there. Uh, a couple of them had already had a couple of drinks uh, beforehand. So this is this is old school, man. You could still <laughs> just kind of when they just stopped smoking and in, in offices. So you could still it was still stale in the in the newsroom there so you had a whole desk of editors and the reporters were kind of on the outskirts and they would all be looking at you to see when you got in and you know we'd get in and we'd have to you know file you know whatever for the day and that just ran its course and you know i um <clears throat> i ended up uh getting a great job at a, a publication called the venture capital journal now at the time in the 90s it was you know venture capital was kind of fun because where yeah. was the money where was the money going in the 90s? Let's see. Well, biotech for one. And oh, yeah, this new fun thing called, you know, dot com and internet businesses. We're like, what's this? And so I actually got to interview Bezos um, back oh, when wow. they got they got their last tranche from uh, was it Black Rock? group and a bunch bunch of other big big heavy hitter private equity folks a little bit before they went public so 97 or so yeah and uh yeah i mean that was you know something that i was like wow like i i'm kind of witnessing something here and i went to work for a startup for a while i bounced around i'm not going to go through my whole resume and accounting sort of just came up as a job yeah. you know i was looking to you know i was looking to bounce from where I was, I think I was freelancing for the first time in my life, and I was just kind of sucking wind. And I was still a fairly young guy at the time, and uh, you know, so they, uh, you know, they they gave me a shot. Um, they also their offices were literally down the street from my apartment. I'm like, oh, you kidding? I'm like, you kidding me? I can walk <laughs> like here, and also like my favorite like beer. You know, we're talking, you know, big tie in here. So my favorite pub in New York City is was will always be the blind tiger ale house blind tiger Tiger turned me on to they are like the gods of craft beer like in terms of like they've they you know when i when i told you before about like you know bars that would sort of start catering to this they were very very few i would say maybe two or three in all of new york city and they were one of them that would do this and to, to this day they have relationships with brewers they come in they feature them you know you can you can have something you they would do like a bunch of like there's a bunch of breweries going on in florida that you would never have any idea like what's going on in florida and they'll do like a whole you know uh you know kind of a tap takeover yeah. partial yeah. tap takeover of just these florida beers you know 
Jay Wakefield, Cigar City, to name a few, like a bunch of, and, and a bunch that you would never ever hear about because, you know, beer culture is so, it's such a local Thing. very regionalized yeah it's like yeah. with food like oh yeah go to this pizza place but like you can't get it anywhere else you're just yeah. gonna go here you know you go to atlanta it's like oh yeah there's just you know you go to this spot because this is where you get this you're not going to see it anywhere else so um so it was right down the street from the blind tiger so like we would drink <laughs> we would drink there after work and uh yeah, I just, I don't know, I got to know there's lots of conferences in this space, not that I hadn't been to any before, but I realized like count, accountants, just they're very social creatures. Um, you know, you all need each other to kind of feed off each other, get these new ideas of like what to do. I mean, you guys maybe even started where a lot of other accountants started, which is in a big regional or a big four or a big eight or a big whatever it was yep. at the time. It was eight when I started. Yeah. Um, so that's why that's how you know like you can age somebody like, oh, there, was, yeah. there was eight of them oh yeah i remember there was 10 like oh wow you know you like, whoa back. now you're really going deep now yeah, you're going back yeah yeah the, the matthew, matthew, got... matthew and i are from the era of six right Big six. yeah six yeah, the yeah, six just, yep yeah, sure yeah, sure yeah, sure yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I, re I remember who they were uh <laughs> and the ink was still drying on sarbanes oxley at the time which just celebrated its 20th anniversary uh oh, recently yeah. but when that, that came out that was we were in the middle of it and i was like oh this is this is that <laughs> impact if you were a large particularly if you were a larger firm and you did like tax and compliance and advisory work you were like no, 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 you can't do this no more. So that was like, you know, that was like a big shift. And big then, shift. and then I, I think that, you know, the biggest, you know, um, since then really was cloud, you yeah. know, in terms yeah. of the impact on work and how you work. And now, you know, it took a good 10 years or so to really sink into people's brains. I think so too. Go, yeah. Okay. So ten anyway, years in a, I thought years in a pandemic right <laughs> I, I all this stuff well that was that was the four i i said years ago one back when i was just the tech editor i was just covering counting tech i said you know and and looking at adoption levels even at the mid-level firms and it was still fairly slow at the time i said you know what like accountants are just not going to make a move until they're really forced to like you have to like sarbanes oxley something like that was like has boom. to come through you yep, have yep. to you you have to do these certain things until you have to do certain things you're either going to actively push it away or you're just going to go along and and figure it out and you know and then you're going to have the small you know minority of folks you know like you guys and the way that you've structured your firm you can't expect every accounting firm in america to structure themselves right. the same way. to do, to do it that way yeah you're yeah. kind of this top tier of like all right we're already there and we're just looking for you know kind of the newest the greatest the latest um yeah know, i think stuff. that's I, I think that's exactly right and, and i guess two two interesting things uh, as you you walk through that fat backstory seth um one, what is, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I've said this before on someone else's podcast, but I think people who don't really know accountants don't probably recognize how social <laughs> we need are. to be. Right. So like going right. to the conferences and stuff absolutely. and meeting the people. I've got friends for life, man. And yeah, um, it's you know, people, I, people just have this perception that it's going to be like there's these introverts. And again, there's a lot of there's nothing wrong with being that way. But like the sure. not social, but go to an accounting conference like you, you you've been to. We'll talk more about yours in here in a minute. But like, it's a very social group, right? And having these outlets, I think that's huge. And then the second thing I love is the fact that um, it seems like beer. You know, and your 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 enjoyment of beer was actually helpful in like getting you into the profession because your favorite bar, <laughs> this silly, your favorite, it your favorite happened. Bar? I was like, oh my god, it's right down the street from the Tiger. Like we can go after this work, and I, I introduced I introduced people to work to it. Um, <laughs> there was it was right in the middle of the, the 2003, the big blackout in New York that we had, and went actually up into Canada. That big one, that, like went up the coast. Um, where do you think we went like we were just it was like three in the afternoon and we we're like in the middle of august and we're like well shoot i guess we're all going home and some of us are like well no let's go get a drink so i'm like i know where I to go it. see i i always knew it i knew it and seth is confirming it here today mm -hmm. is that like beer and accounting it just it just goes it goes together it just it goes together it can't be it can't be re removed from each other i no. love the the first the first qb connect that i went to um, I remember it was in it was in San Jose, 
of course, where it stayed. Uh, and they had, I remember at the end of the day, they had like a little sort of craft beer like setup there. It was like local, you know, local beer. Like, yeah, San, you know, there was, there was some great beers from, uh, from San Jose. Uh, and, you know, back to, you know, our, our, our conference, you know, San Diego was, was chosen. Now, originally we were going to go to Miami. Now, you know, obviously Florida, you know, they've, they've got a good, you know, handful of beers and stuff yeah. down there. But once I found out we were, we were looking at San Diego upon my suggestion, because I had such a great time at the last zero con. I'm like, yeah. it was in San oh, yeah. Diego. Yeah. I'm like, we should consider San Diego. And you know, the folks from the UK are like, Oh, right. Okay. Let's check it out. And sure enough, they found some hotel deals and, some packages that we could yep. do our conference at and i'm like hey not for nothing guys but san diego happens to be like the beer capital of, of the united states yeah the craft beer craft beer capital of the united states. like hands down like per capita per square mile yeah, it's a great <laughs> spot for, I mean, the, yeah fantastic out there. It's rid oh. ridiculous ridiculous like even more than like seattle or portland which yeah. used to be and they saw a ton. So here we go. More beer and accounting connections. It's their people. People thought we were crazy for having a no. podcast about accounting and beer, but like, no, I'm oh, telling no. you, I'm telling you. Oh, we you could go, we go into all the compliance that, and this is why you realize this is why craft culture happened because of, you know, the state-by-state -state rules, the compliance right. rules kind of got to the point of where like, okay, it was actually feasible to, to do this. Now you still kind of need folks who understand like all of the, you know all of the boxes and things. yeah it, in, it's interesting i've gotten the, i've gotten to know a couple uh actually three different firm owners who just focus on breweries or craft kind of brewery work and it's it, yeah. and we've done some work with a few breweries uh sweetwater we used to do some work with here in atlanta but oh right on all, all these folks really dive deep as their vertical niche and it's amazing when you look at to your point about all the compliance um that is there. it's a, there's a ton i ton. mean and, and crossing know. state lines and distribution has made it such that like it has it's a challenge for the business model but it does keep it hyper regional and localized so it kind of evolves this very local kind of flavor to it uh, the way it works but like yeah it's just very difficult to get that stuff mm -hmm. mostly you're right? mostly yeah. your sort you're sourcing oh, local yeah. for the vast majority of what you do because just for practicality's sake like you don't want to have to wait for shipments of something from another yeah. state i mean sure some folks are like oh yeah we get these new zealand hops but yeah it's like now they figure out oh i can grow this i can grow this like near you know I me mean, i can grow these certain kinds of hops yeah. um yeah. here um but you know originally the seeds and stuff they were brought over yeah. anyway yeah. you know all that um, um but like okay so tell me let's let's do a um yeah a quick you i mean you've been in the profession for so long like you said yeah. you saw like Sarbanes Oxley, you saw the cloud. Well, let's maybe bring it more recent and maybe I'll start with you, Matthew. Um, <laughs> what about, okay, so obviously Seth, you know, really helps run and put out there probably one of the dominant communication sites and news kind of news sites, if you will, for the it's, it's information. It's information. I, I would yeah, say information. We're not breaking out. anything. Right. We're not reporting as much as we are putting a spotlight Correct. on. Yeah, like, and you've got some great writers out there, people we yeah. know in the space who kind of yeah. contribute to it. But Matthew, what's what do you think? I guess in this information cycle this year, like what are, what have you think have been the things, the headlines, the topics that have kind of like jumped out to you that you think have been most interesting um kind of no pressure uh, yeah. just stream of consciousness uh private equity changing how big firms are structured yeah um tax people quitting at a rate that is unsustainable Un for unprecedented and i had a calm about that recently too and um, basically encouraging to stay like please. yeah they should stay i think we can fix it um i think a few of us have to get our heads together and figure out how to fix it um but i think we can fix it um those are the two. two those are the two two the macro two huge things that i that i think this year would be the two big headlines for you. Yeah. Seth, what about you? I mean, you, I mean, whether either personally, which one's like to you that you're either working on or you found interesting, or I don't know, you may even have more information or stats on like, hey, here's the stuff that like a couple of posts we did that just blew up that people were what or what however you want to take this one. What do you or, or what do you think are some of the stories or topics that hit this year that were just like, wow, the big 
you know, big information that folks are into. Well, to Matt's point, uh, definitely 100%. And then, you know, ASCPA, uh, uh, for what they're worth, like the, the numbers that they've put out on their recent research, the PFS study that they did on, you know, small, you know, it's just their small firm study that they do every year. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's year in and year out for years. It was always like, oh, you know, staffing, getting heads around technology, whatever. This year was like the the blank blank IRS. We can't take it anymore. They want tax pros want out. Anyone doing tax wants the heck out because they can't deal with it anymore. They're like nothing's going to change. This is an underfunded organization that we are forced to deal with on a regular and. It's like they're they're done. They've had enough, and that their frustrations are have bubbled over. The whole you know March Trinity thing, the two and a half plus years of the tax season that doesn't end for tax pros. That's the one thing I think that was a saving grace. If if tax was an annuity for you, and it is for particularly for a lot of small firms, a lot of CPA firms who are small, the predominant amount of CPAs in this country are small. They're at a yeah. small firm let's be honest you know that's just it's just a numbers game um they you know they rely on it year in year out and because of that you know you have to deal with the irs but at some point that ended you had a cycle to it maybe you use some tech and you were able to kind of wind things down a lot sooner get you know get client paperwork in documentation sooner whatever but you still at the end of the day had to deal with the irs and it has gotten to the point of where folks are just saying enough. Yeah, I want out. I want to do something else. And you can't just be like, go advisory. Like, no, it's not the answer. That's and and they've just have, are worn out on that narrative too because no one's showed them how or what advisory can be. Like, what you know really is it? Maybe it's actually sitting after you do a return or do some returns for, you know, corporate client or an individual client and go, all right, like, let's, let's kind of start planning for some things. I've got your financials right here. Um, you know, let's, let's look at the next six months. Let's look at the rest of the year in your business, or in your personal life. Let's maybe talk about, okay, you know, look, you've been, you've been with me for X amount of years. Um, I see that you're maybe, you know, have you thought about retirement? Have you thought about all of these things that accountants haven't really thought as much about this forward looking anything, but they have the power to do it now. And so I think coupled with the, so what you remember, I talked before about accountants aren't going to necessarily by and large on the right. majority are not going to do anything unless they're forced to. 100%. Now, I think they're finally realizing, huh? So I actually don't have to really do this level of like grunt work and I can still kind of stay intact and I can still maybe do some other things outside of that and have a sustainable business. I'm willing to listen. So that goes into my second trend, which is, you know, what are you doing as a firm to, you know, it's like, oh, attracting and retaining talent. Okay. So that's still, old, that's still very high on the list. Right. So it goes to your firm culture and, and the kind of work that you do. So someone, you know, you want to get someone young, they've probably started out um, like you all, like at a bigger firm somewhere, they're ready to kind of jump and go to some cool outfit like Acuity or, you know, whoever, you know, maybe, maybe you've got just a small local, you know, firm or area firm that, you know, you just, you know, you're, you're working with more startup businesses, you're doing things differently or using tech in the right way. Um, that's attractive. So, you know, you have to just be more than what has come before over the past 20 years. Yeah. And the folks, the folks who are wanting to get out, the folks who have kind of, you know, aged out or getting ready to age out, they have to also be looking at like, what are the, what am I going to sell? It's like, yeah, I'd love to sell and move on and do, you know, some other things. Well, what is it that you have to sell? So that's kind of the second biggest trend is, is just kind of the, you know, what's next, Yeah, you know, for, for, you know, for me and, uh, you know, and then there's a lot of other subsets, yeah. you know, to, to that. And I, I think it needs to be talked about, um, uh, 
more, which is you can't just say, oh, well, you know, doom and gloom. And we've been we've been ringing this bell for 10 years. We've been telling you to go and add casts and and go advisory for years. And you're not listening. And now you're ready to get out. We told you that's not the approach. The approach needs to be one more of. You know, how do I how do I do this at, at, a, at almost a micro level? Like, how do I take the steps to kind of, right, you know, right. get there? Yeah, I, 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 you know, there's a couple of things you both you guys said there uh, resonate with me. You know, I mean, we, you're seeing the tax issue and people leaving the profession, Seth, in mass because you've got so many or just or just wanting to. They're venting wanting to, the yeah. frustration They're of venting. just being like, I don't know what to to do. I've lost staff. I've lost clients over this. I can't take it. Yeah. So I mean, you're seeing that, I think, at, at, at scale, at a huge, because you're seeing, you're, you're really yeah. connected to so many different firms. Matthew and I, we've seen it in our firm. This has happened. This is, you know, people leaving saying, hey, we love Acuity. We love you guys. I can't handle being in the profession anymore. We've talked last to week. a lot of other, last week. We last talked week to, it happened with yeah, one of our tax guys. A great we, tax person who we just, who said, I'm sorry to be leaving, but I can't stay in tax. A bunch of other of our friends who are firm owners have had the same experience. And so it makes me wonder whether, there was to your point, Seth, about um, they may have been saying for years, like, hey, ad cast, ad advisory. And, and, you know, that's not really, it is not helpful to have people just kind of say that. But I wonder, it makes me think about, I wonder if this has been a buildup for years, right? Like tax has only been getting worse and worse and worse. And all of a sudden you have all these tax people who are kind of just doing their typical, like something's not, get, I'm not so uncomfortable yet that I'm going to move. I haven't had anything huge to make me move yet, but we get to this period where it gets worse and worse and worse. The IRS is understaffed. And then you hit this period of the great resignation or relocation or whatever you want to call it. And it finally becomes that breaking point where the tax people are like, yeah, this isn't, it didn't start sucking this year. It's been sucking for a long time and it finally built to a breaking point. And now we see mobility in, in work and in location. And it's like, okay, we're seeing this mass exodus. And I think that the you know, as we talk about what firms do and some are taking the big ones or maybe you're taking the approach of, Hey, let's bring in some private equity to see if we can really restructure things. I think there's other more small emergent cloud firms who are saying, yeah, something's got to change, right. To make this a little bit better. And I think that's where, you know, we think about things like you got to gather firms together. Sometimes it's like this and having a beer and talking, or sometimes it's like having a conference and going, Hey, let's get some new ideas to bring some something new to the profession. So your other point about that, like, hey, what's next? Like, what is coming on next? I think that I've always felt that, you know, I know not everyone loves going to conferences and things that they can be expensive. It takes time, all those things. But like, to me, I've always felt like that's been some of the seeds of where we have been inspired like by other bust firms. out of your comfort yeah, zone to get and there just and get those ideas it. going about what's next. Or maybe you're just talking and having a, I, I've had, more times where we've had a beer uh, at a bar or like you step out of the conference floor a little bit and you're talking to someone going, there's a great idea for a new practice line or a way to do something differently. And I think those have been the places where the what's next seems to emerge from is kind of these places it, where people- It does. And that's why I like going. Like you just, you know, you're you're right there on the ground floor with the folks. I mean, let's be honest. You know, your average workday account doesn't necessarily pick themselves up and go to a conference. So a few- do yeah. but by and large it's the folks such as yourselves the folks who are just maybe thinking a little more advanced you don't necessarily meet someone like Tom Brolin right I, just like at you know, like your your local like you know CPA conference like she's right. become a personality at these things and because she's just you know she's very, obviously very you know very real very passionate about you know what she's you know what she's doing and you know she's gone she's gone through it and yep. it's like wow like this is someone this is why like you always see people around her she's like i'm gonna take the time to you like you sought me out and i've always got something to say so i'm gonna sit here and talk to you and that's why she's like just just one she's example i guess it, like genie Je genie whitehouse also Jeannie's she's awesome yep. genie's oh been gosh. at this a long time and she's been saying some of this i met her at my first conference you know, I don't want to, you know, not aging anyone or anything like that, <laughs> but I'm saying I met her at my first conference and she was, um, she was on the, she was on the vendor side. She worked for a little company called ACPAC. Um, oh yeah. That eventually merged in, merged in with Sage or Sage 
bought them or whatever. But you know, they were they were a great accounting solution and had their following and everything like everything like that. And uh, she was a big advocate for them. And she was a CPA who just loved tech. She was like she said, she's embraced her nerddom and you know wanted to put it out there. But she's someone also who will always take time to talk to anybody and just be like, look, I'm just like you. Like I'm a CPA. I came up through the ranks. <clears throat> And I just want to pass on what I know. Now, these are just a couple of people. Uh, and, 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 but I think those are great yeah, examples. But there's dozens and dozens of these so many of them. individuals, you know, people that we had at our event uh, who came as attendees, came to speak. Like there's some new herb voices, people that, um, you know, have been at the game for a while that, you know, really have something to say. And you come and talk to them in the hallway or over a beer. Or something like that you know we never want the event to get that big where you're like oh man i went to i i i mean and this is this, probably i didn't i didn't see you i didn't yeah this is probably a great a great transition uh over to talk that's... about to, to talk about the event i i had a i mean i i thought san diego was awesome i it was Thank one of, i mean that one you guys picked a great location like yeah there you go there it is right there <laughs> untapped san diego um, i didn't i didn't expect this either i was like <laughs> Ooh, okay <laughs> It was a great, I just thought it was a great location. I really liked how, um, in fact, it was kind of all self-contained. So you kind of, you kind of had that vibe of where you could go in and check in on different speakers and things. But also if you went over to the bar or the pool, there were going to be other people there. And so it was super organic and had a very, to your point, like. That's what we wanted. Not getting too big. It was a very organic vibe. And um, I, I just thought it was. I really, I really enjoyed it. It was a ton of fun. How did you. you guys, um, is that something accounting web has done? I know you, you're not just here with America. Is that the first conference you all have ever done? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so it just was, where did, how did that come about of like, just, okay, Hey, you, I guess you already had an online community. You've been nerd well, building that for a long time, but yeah. Yeah. How'd you I, step over to the physical side? I think, uh, so we have a UK parent company. And uh, they had had some success with, uh, you know, with the conference world over there. And uh, <clears throat> expos are kind of a big, a big thing over there. Expos yeah. tend not to work so much over here. Um, you know, the accountants here tend to want a little more meat. So um, how would you define an expo for terms for like a, a U.S. account? Like what, what does a U.S. Uh, okay. expo look like? So an expo is more like um you know more vendor centric light on the Got content i mean there's content there it's peppered in but by and large it's just you can come in kind of kick the tires on a <clears throat> on a on a bit of tech or a service and you know go your separate ways or you know hang out and network and, and what have you and you know maybe there's some sessions around it um for our event you know we wanted to do what we knew that we did best which was content deliver mm -hmm practical, useful content to accountants and put that on the live stage. And then sure, you know, we realize like where the money has to come from, you know, yeah. so we had opportunities for vendors there. We had opportunities to meet them and, you know, but you know, putting, putting something like that together was, was really just the next phase in our, our evolution that we feel like, Hey, we've got to try this um, to, you know, come what may. Um, because you know yeah. we we need to we just need to do something different and we had talked about it uh for for some years and i didn't think the time was right but um there really is uh a uh a kind of a a real need for independent uh shows out in our space 100%. and i felt i felt that we could do that um, in a, in a very meaningful way. Um, you know, you see where some of the other shows have, have gone or come and gone and, and, you know, by and large they're, they're vendor driven. Uh, and then you have, you know, the biggest in our space I think is, is engage. Um, yeah. but, and I've seen that evolution too. I started going where it was just, you know, it was a couple of, couple of separate conferences. It was called the tech plus, uh, and, and then there's the practitioner symposium. And then those kind of smashed together because it made sense. It was like, well, why aren't we doing tech and practice at the same time? Ooh, pff, you know, light bulb. Great. And I met some great, great people doing that year in and year out. You just knew 
and it was always in Vegas. Every freaking conference, accounting conference in the space was in Vegas. I would be in Vegas easily five, six times a year because that's where they all were. That's where they that's were. Just, it's just, you know, you went, oh, a week later, oh, I'm flying back to Vegas. Oh, okay, here I am back at freaking McCarran. Uh, but, you know, it, was, it wasn't that bad of a flight if you can get it direct. And then obviously your trip to your hotel is nothing, you know, um, you know, you could, you know, your flight back was, was pretty easy because you just went from your hotel back to there. But anyway, um, but that's gotten to a point of where it, while it serves a great purpose, it's, it's somewhat untenable, particularly for, you know, the workaday accountant who's just like, I can't A, afford that. B, and you, B, and you maybe I'm it, not. Yeah. A you CPA. said a great earlier because like, actually, when you think about it, most of the profession is not that, is not, I mean, is not working at a big, large firm. And that really came no. to large firms. I think they do. And, and I don't want to directly call them out for it, but I, it's just what I've noticed over 20 years. It's as much as they'll say, if you, if pressed, they'll be like, well, no, no, we don't. We've got this whole other sort of small firm, you know, side of what we do, but you know, then there's then there's a whole other thing where you have half of the CPA profession, you know, the folks who, you know, they go in year, year and year out uh, to renew their license to be a CPA. And they're like, I don't really care for them. I don't want to give them money. I just, yeah. you know, I they don't do anything for me. You know, whatever. There's two schools of thought, thought. And then there's others who are like, they're great. They're doing such great things for the profession. They're, they're down in Washington. You know, Barry's fighting for us. And that's great. Like e- either way, it's just not, to all told, it's not for everybody. To yeah. your point, to your point, Kenji, like it's not for everybody. Uh, so we wanted to have something that maybe was a little more down to earth, um, realizing again that a, a lot of folks, just as we said before, they're not necessarily going to take their time or their money to go to an event. Um, you know, so we just really wanted to give it a shot. I I, th- I think it's a for, at least from a strategy standpoint. I again we 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 go to most of the conferences or a lot of conferences. We talk to many other firm owners who go to. I do think there's absolutely a space and a desire for that independent conference of where they're you know mm-hmm. they, we've had them out throughout the time and years and out and some get acquired and some kind of go away and things. But like that place to where, well, how about somebody who really wants to go to something that's a little more independent and neutral. And sure, there's going to be sponsors who always influence agendas and, you know, the expo floor and et cetera. But like, hey, it's really more just about the content we're putting out for the accounting profession, not being totally driven by a software company. And I don't mean to say that like, like a ZeroCon and QuickBooks Connect, which we always go to, they're great. But, you know, we all understand, especially accountants, especially those who work in assurance, understand the term of independence. Like they're they're not fully independent. You're not getting a, you're, you are getting fed something from a software company that's trying to sell to us. And so, even though I think all of us enjoy those, I think it is a it, there's a need out there for something to be independent and for something to be a bit more neutral, where. You know, I think about, and maybe this is a good point about sessions. I don't even know if this could ever be a session. Uh, I feel like I've seen very few of them. And I know that you right now, I would say anyone listening to the podcast or tuning in on YouTube, um, Seth and the whole team at Accounting Web are looking for people who want to bring ideas to mm-hmm. like what they'd want to speak on. So there's a call right now out there. Like, dude, who, who does not want to come to San Diego in any time of the year, especially in May after busy season? You want to come. But like, also, if you've got something you really want to talk about, like reach out and take a look on Accounting Web. I think there's a great call for speakers right now on topics. Um, but I, I just think there's a awesome opportunity for, you know, maybe even talking about like, hey, could, could there be a place where there is some more, discussions about, all right, let's go and break down different ERP systems and pros and cons or head to head things. Or, you know, I, I know that people like, Ooh, is, you know, are we really going to get QBO and zero up on a stage together? We can watch them all duke it out. Eh, probably not. Maybe they wouldn't, but you never know. Maybe they could do that. I think I've seen that one time happen. I thought it was pretty cool. I see Matthew, you're about to like, you had an idea. I know you probably want oh, to I mean, like I think it'd be more fun to get it. A QBO firm owner and, and a zero firm owner because they get like more passionate than QBO and zero do. True. And well, some and- to be fair, some some are doing both. It depends on your True. client base, right? Well, we're both. And, yeah. yeah. And then there's then there's some that you might have also been like, oh, well, like intact actually works for a certain yeah, 
yeah. set of clients too. Like if you need sort of that level of like, you know, that, you know, that, that level of, of, of accounting and service. Like I never thought that they were, you know, they, they kind of sit in that weird place. Uh, like they're not fully RP, but even though they've got some bolt on things where like you could have some ERP types of things, but they're also not QuickBooks or zero. Like they don't, yeah. they're a little more advanced, but they're also not, you know, that next tier. And, and I guess you can't so, do and, it. And, and, and yeah, sometimes I, I, you have clients that were like, yeah, that's actually perfect for us. We're, we're a nonprofit organization. We're a tech company that's growing and, you know. Yeah, so I have a question to, I'm asking for a friend. So if I were a firm owner, firm owner, about $10 million firm, uh, about 150 people, and I was interested in presenting at your conference. What what kind of what kind of things would you be interested in hearing about, or or what kind of uh, what kind of what types of sessions, or what what themes or kind of philosophy are you going for this year for the conference? What have you learned in scaling to that point? For for one, uh, there might be some folks that are uh, quite a bit smaller than that, but are on that path to growth. Not that growth is the goal, actually, for a lot of firms. Some are just kind of, they, they want to maybe, you know, have better, you know, revenue models, you know, year in and year out, and, you know, maybe grow sort of financially, maybe work with less clients, but make more money, that kind of thing, or serve a different client set or dive deeper into their niches. But those who are looking to scale, they could learn from you. Ooh, in, like that, that. in that in that regard that, and then the, you know it was the um, favorite that was the favorite topic at our i mean i mean you could tell us to your friend uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was the favorite that i think well what i re heard back uh, feedback from the conference of the favorite part of the panel that i was on was when they asked us the worst part about growing and we mm -hmm. went through like all the like get real yeah. just get real we got real just get real I, I think that's one of the things, yeah, but what's made it nice about, uh, and again, it, for those, just disclaimer here, for those who might be listening, of course, we loved Accounting Web Live because we got to be there. We were, Matthew and I were both presenters there. We were there. We were both presenters there. We loved it. But yeah, some of those conversations that were had, I remember I like some of the was, I mean, super authentic and super just, I'm glad. yeah, yeah, super. Yeah, all the, all, all, everything was great about the content, but the, the connections were unbelievable were great, that I was able great. to make. So like, it was just the the those sidebar conversations and in between it was just a really great group that you cultivated uh, so so. I'll just, yeah i'll just say so, so if you're listening again i would really encourage you it's a it's a perfect timing right it's right after busy season i know we're all trying to flatten out the tax curve and make things less bad but like may is a really good time to kind of okay take a little bit of a break get to san diego it's it's a it's a good i always felt like again a very good organic kind of vibe amongst folks and the conference is actually actually asking for like, hey, what do you want to what do you want to present on and speak to? So take a look at go to go to Accounting Web, and and look take a look at what some of the you know think about some things you'd want to talk about or hear about, and go ahead and fill out a form and submit to Seth and his crew, and you know we're going to gen up a, a good agenda. Um, all right, we're 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 coming to the end of the time here. So as we do in our usual acuity tradition. Please put your trays in the upright position and uh, fasten seat belts. Here. Fasten seat belts here. And also have another swig of your tasty beverage. And let's get ready to rate some beers. I'm going to start with mine first because I've got it pulled up to my beer. Um, I am drinking. And you know it's a... Oh, look at this. He's going to share it. Oh, I, this, 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 yeah. uh, um, the, you can't spell Haven without Evan. It's a wild Heaven beer, 6.5%. I, I enjoyed it. A um, little funky, but kind of sessionable, I'd say, IPA. Um, I liked it. I, I see the average ratings of 3.8, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go um a four, I'm gonna go a four oh. Four point oh there. I like it. This is a um Atlanta beer over on the west side of town. Matthew, have you been to that brewery? Uh yeah. You've been over there. Okay, Matthew. Um, I still feel like you, you picked a Dosec Keys. So we're gonna go for you next. I mean, I I like your story about it being you're being on a border town. I'm still like, okay, Dosec Keys. You can do better. You can do better. Okay, so but that's okay. You guys can rate however you want to rate. You you don't get to criticize how I would. 
This is my <laughs> second favorite Mexican lager. Okay. okay. So um, in the context of that, I'm putting it a four, seven, five. It's not the five that four, the soul seven, is. Five? Oh, we heard Whoa, five. bro. Dude. All right. This is Explain. my opinion. This is Explain. Explain. No, no, no. This let's, is, let's hear it. Let's hear it. This is my opinion. This is mm -hmm. a beer I could drink at any time, all the time, always be happy. It makes me happy. It fits my palate. And my palate may not be sophisticated. I do prefer, like, if I'm doing it versus other beers, I know this is controversial. Like, my stouts and porters are always going to be higher than a Mexican lager. But I just got to represent for Dos Equis today. Like, I'm going 475 with that one. Okay, I will say this about Matthew. Matthew and I are style. I think Seth and I are probably more a little similar in this. Matthew is very much a, a, I like what I like. And if it falls within what I like, you're going to get a high rating. And I like things that remind me of being back home as a border kid, et cetera. I like oh, yeah. porters and heavies. He's always going to rate high. I mean, there's probably the beer nerds, like probably Seth and I are like, oh, we're going to talk about mouthfeel and okay, what they sing, you know, so and what yeast they're using. My, I'm so emotional high. about my ratings. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. No, that's that's good. As as all we are, as we are. Well, uh, Seth, remind me again. Which which I know you're looking from Paradox, right? I, I am, and I don't know if you follow oh, me. You could, you could probably see my rating because I I just Paradox. posted it. I just oh, post. Okay. I just posted it. So, um, we, 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 also, we also rate yours what, on here too. We, we add what number are you on this? Sure. What'd you put it at? Would you, would so you I'm I'm putting it at three seven five, and here's why. I realized I was one of the, I was going four plus for everything, and I didn't even want it. Like if anything was below that, I was like wreck. I didn't even want to rate it, or if it, I would just say, "Oh man, it just this really disappointed me." I've adjusted my thinking, and that anything for me, as you said, Matt, like it's very personal. This is your personal rating, it's your personal opinion. My personal opinion is anything like four plus is like this is this is really you know you got to sit down like this is take notice but yeah. you know so anything kind of in the three mid to upper threes range like this is good this is solid i would crush this i would really drink this so i, I gave i gave this uh ls a uh, a 375 for you know just again the overall flavor uh that it has i think is very representative of the style I'm not, you know, it's a good for me. It's a good starter beer to open up a session. Mm -hmm. um, uh, which, by the four way, after half, this, four and a half percent. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah I mean, right. it's yeah, it's just really, you know, Hellas isn't going to get so big on you. It's just, you know, most German beers aren't. You know, you're going to stay in that sort of four or five ish kind of range, and it's really just going to, you know, have that sort of malty, uh, you know, kind of flavor for you. And, you know, real easy to drink. I'm going to, you know, when we leave, I'm going to move on to this one. I just want to just preview. What do we got here? Oh, the, oh, collective arts, collective arts. I don't know if you guys have experienced collective arts. So they're, uh, mm. uh, they're a Canadian uh, brewer, but uh, they, you know, will collaborate with, uh, you know, some U.S. Uh, partners. So this oh, is, yeah. this is, so this is the Saberlicious Lotus. It is a New England style IPA. Hazy and uh, nice. Looking to, looking to crack into that now. To me, the most representative of the true New England style. To me, if you guys ever get your hands on uh, a uh, a heady topper, oh, or, never had it. Or for, or or focal banger. Focal banger to me hmm. has a little bit more of an edge. It's got some bite to it, like a good West Coast would, like a you know, like a like a plenty. If you ever had, oh yeah, we had, we've, ever, had, we've had a plenty, we've had some plenty on here. Yep, yep, yep. At some point in one's life, you have to. If you're a beer drinker, it's like you know, you say you like IPA, try this. Conversely, the East Coast version is um, Vogel Banger Alchemist putting out also very very close second from Maine Bissell Brothers. Okay. Do you ever run across anything from Bissell Brothers, particularly the, the substance or well, for anything from Bissell Brothers? Bissell They're Brothers. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Just real, you know, nice sort of golden color. It's not super cloudy. 
um yeah. like a lot of some of them get some of them get a little over the top and that's that. fine yeah. i don't i fine. i, I like the cloud look look you know look at someone like other half other half to me does ipas like out of the box they they can they can mess with the hops all day long with other half if you ever had anything from other half yeah uh yep. there you know and their their signature really is the that the, that cloudiness you know to it but they're all about flavor they're they're going to manipulate it to like the smallest degree double Man. dry Listen, oak, you, oak the, cream I mean, are you you're getting i mean we need to find a way to put like in accounting web not just like you know <laughs> and not just accounting content but like the beer content i mean the value you are getting if you are an accountant who is a beer drinker the value you just got here from having set go. with us i got I mean, I got on. my tiered pricing come here. On. I'm gonna. You want me to talk about this? That's fine. You're up. You're up here. You're signing in at this level, and you know, heck, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe to me so you could get this all year long. There you go. And, there you go. You know, also, we hey, well, we didn't we didn't get to touch on that the whole subscription. Oh, that's a that's a big one too. Pricing. Speaking of Untapped, Seth is only our second person we've had on Drink While You Think who actually has an account. Um, you know, Randy Crabtree, we talked about with earlier has got an account. Also come and follow uh, Seth. We're, drink while you think's on there. Seth is on there. Come see what we're drinking. If you're a big beer drinker, connect with us on Untap. It's a great place to learn. About it's more. great. And just yeah. see what people are drinking. And for me personally, just, you know, because when you enter beer nerddom, you realize, oh, here's another very super nerdy thing that I do. And I think maybe some of you accountants will appreciate this. From an accounting point of view, I never rate the same beer twice if i've rated you if i've drank it it's the first time i've had it and i'll even look because how do you know when you've drank hundreds of beers yeah how do you know but other than on your untapped that's it if you're like oh you had this before but the one exception might be like oh i had this in can but it's now it's on a nitro pour or it's on tap or or, that's a, a, fair. or a cask Ooh, Ooh. okay <laughs> you know that's a totally you know, ball game go right? find that i might be like okay i haven't had this like this because it takes on a different form than you know poured uh out of a can if you remember you know you really didn't see you obviously canned beer was canned beer but for craft everyone was crafting in the bottles everybody yeah and now you go find a bottle can't find it can't find not, it not now really it's, some it's do awesome. but especially when you have the cool artwork and things you can do on cans these days it's better there's oh, across man. the board for preserving the beer all, all the good stuff but i mean see that this is okay so two things all right accountants thank you for hanging with us on this show there's two things we need you to do if you're hmm. not already following going to subscribing to accounting web or certainly sign up to accounting web live you need to do that second is follow seth on untapped i mean my or, or, or Twitter, like I'm B2B. Twitter, I'm, I'm at, on at, Twitter. Oh, yeah. At B2B. You, you at B2B. Your pictures on Twitter, too, for your beers, yeah, too. I, I do. I'll of course. There too, and well, course. It, it's connected. I, I connect it uh, when I share. Yeah. I share my beers. So my three passions beer, baseball, business. Boom. And, you know, of course, my kids and being a dad, but, you know, they're. We, big, baseball we, we're, we're that way too we're like oh yeah they, they come along with the ride yeah. for all this kind of stuff too. right yeah beer, they baseball, come along beer, and, bus and business baseball, and business that's yep. perfect that's perfect yep. scott scarano would approve of that because it's all it's all, same, it all alliteration uh, uh scotty weird, so weird thing zero con are we going to see each other what's up we're actually going to see you at zero con um i actually there's a good brewery down there that amanda let's Aguilar. hit it put us on uh we've had a bunch of them on the show there too we've gotten to know some of the owners over there let's hit that while we're there let's hit it absolutely it. what's that one um it is the port I'm gonna forget port the orleans port, port orleans port orleans brewery, brewery. yeah okay. so come now. check us out we'll definitely be hitting that up and a bunch of their beers but yeah everyone if you're in a cute or a zero con look for kenji seth and matthew we will be gonna find about. you and we're going to find I'm you. And definitely we'll going to mess with Scotty too. And we'll probably have a crap brew in our hands. So, hey, cheers, everyone. Thanks. Feel free to subscribe. Get new news. Seth, appreciate you having cheers. me on. Cheers, brother. fellas. Cheers, cheers. man.